Hi, my name is Bonnie Barker. I'm with BonnieBayCrochet.com and today I'm going to cover how to crochet a Celtic cross. Um, this actually goes um, with a pattern that I've developed, um, the Celtic cross baby blanket. Um, it's going to be available soon, or it, it is available on my Ravelry page. Um, I'm under Bonnie Bay um, and that would be R-A-V-E-L-R-Y dot com. Um, you can also find the link to it on my BonnieBayCrochet.com website as well under Bonnie's Patterns, or actually Bonnie's Ravelry Patterns. So um, should you be interested in the pattern for the complete baby blanket, um, you're free to go there. Um, it's just a small, a small fee, um, and you can have that downloaded instantly as a PDF. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm using a lighter weight baby yarn and this is going to involve some color changes. Okay, so I'm going to just crochet. Uh, I, I am using a small swatch of single crochets, uh, four rows deep. Um, I just wanted to have this available so that you understood how this this works. Okay, I'm crocheting one, two, three, four. I'm just going to crochet down a bit, single crochets. Um, now I'm going to change colors. I'm going to change to the purple so that this this cross motif, pardon me, will, will stand out. So this is going to be the front side facing. Here's the purple. So what I'm going to do is before I complete the single crochet, I'm going to change the yarn to purple and pull through purple. And once this is pulled, and if you can knot this in the back or you can just weave in the ends when finished however you plan you know however you handle your color changes um, also there's a YouTube video I have on hiding loose strands and color changes it'll help make some of this easier for you okay now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work through the top loops for this row only we're going to skip this first or, or the next single crochet and we're going to work a double crochet in the next stitch. Now we're going to work in the skipped stitch and we're going to work in front. We're going to cross over this stitch. We're going to pull up a loop. It's a little tricky because I'm using a small hook. And we're going to kind of like a kind of like made an X. Now we're going to do that again. We're going to skip the next stitch and we're going to double crochet in this stitch. Okay, now we're going to cross in front of that stitch. It's a little tough getting it in there. Okay, now before finishing off this stitch, we have another color change. We're going to have to change back to our white. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the white through like so. I'm going to let the the yarn go behind me. Now now we're going to work to the end of the row or to the end of this section in single crochet. Um, the pattern would have the specific numbers as far as you know how to space them and, and honestly you can space these however you want. And this yarn that I'm using can be a little difficult because it has a little shiny um, thread running through it. But but honestly, it, it makes makes for such beautiful work. It, it can be a little difficult though. I will warn you on this. Now we're going to single crochet to the point of where the purple yarn comes back. Now you don't have to cut the yarn each time either. What I would recommend when making these is to is to um, pull off about 25 yards you know put it on a yarn bobbin or or even just um, roll it into a ball with a, a clip or, or something to hold it so that you don't have to keep you know cutting from the same ball of yarn okay okay now this stitch is if you can see it's right next to the purple so I'm going to 
do it halfway. I'm not going to finish the stitch. I'm going to drop my yarn in front since now we're working from the back. Pick up the purple yarn and complete the stitch. Now we're going to work a back post double crochet around the first the first stitch which is here but it's the one that's crossed in front so we're going to pick that up and double crochet or actually it's actually a back post double crochet forgive me there and now we're going to skip the next stitch which is this stitch the next stitch and we're going to do another back post double crochet and it's going to be around the stitch that is leaning in the same direction as the last stitch you crocheted around finish our double crochet. Now this is the part that's kind of hard to show you. Now we're going to go and we're going to work a back post double crochet around the first skip stitch which is right here. You can see the stitch come in and then the last stitch we're going to come in the back door and do a back post double crochet. Okay, now before we complete the stitch, we're going to go back to the white. Now, in an effort to do this quickly, I am not cutting and, and, and tying yarn off or anything like that. But in reality, you wouldn't want these yarns to be crisscrossed like this across your work. What I would do is I would actually cut them individually and join them. Um, or actually in another way of doing that, instead of having to cut and join every time, is you would have a bobbin with this strand and you could have a bobbin with the next row that I'm going to pick up, what I just picked up here. And, and that really does minimize um, how many times you tie things off. And you don't want to have a lot of knots in your work. That would be a kind of a bummer. Now we're going to complete. Just go ahead and work the single crochets to finish off this row. Okay. From the front side, this is what we have, just the beginning of our cross. What we're doing is we're working the cross actually sideways. The long part would be this way, and then the, the cross, the short, the short would go this way. So we're working it from side to side rather than up and down. Okay, so we're going to repeat those two, two rows again. Although it's going to be easier, I think, as we see what we're working on. Okay, so now we have the one stitch that's right next to the purple. I'm going to drop the white. I'm going to pick up the purple to complete the stitch. Now we're going to skip the first stitch, and we're going to front post in the next stitch. Now we're going to work in the first stitch that we skipped. I'm just going to do those X's again. Now we're going to skip the next stitch and we're going to do an, the X in the next stitch. Now we're going to work the one that we skipped, which is right here. It's a little tight. Okay, now before we complete the stitch, we're going to switch back to the white yarn. Single crochet across. I'll come back after I finish this part of it. Okay, now I've crocheted the rest of the white here and then I've turned and then come back to the point where it's the last single crochet. I'm going to drop the white and pick up the purple again. Okay, complete that single crochet. Now I'm going to work a back post double crochet. Notice that I don't skip the first stitch when I'm working from the back side. I always double do a back post double crochet and then I skip the next stitch and then I back post double crochet in that next stitch. Now I'm going to go back on the skipped stitch which is right here if you can see that. These are tricky I will say that take your time on this so that you can get your a grasp of it otherwise it will not have the same effect. And then the last stitch that's purple, I'm going to go in the back door. Okay, now to complete the last stitch, I'm going to bring 
the white yarn back. Again, it, this would be on a separate bobbin um, if you that, to not you know have this yarn crisscrossing in the back. You know, if you don't mind it, the yarn crisscrossing in the back, you know that would make it a little bit easier. Um, I think it is nicer though if you put the yarn on separate bobbins for every color change. In the long run, it just eliminates a lot of the extraneous uh, strands there. Okay. Now this is the row where we're going to be adding the top part. Now we're going to need one, two, three, four, okay, six stitches for this. Uh, let's see. So the first thing we're going to need to do, one, two, three, four, five, okay. Okay, we're going to start here. We're going to need to switch the yarn. So I'm going to go ahead and switch it from the back. Now normally you'd have you, let me do that again. Normally you'd have um, other stitches. Okay, here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip the first stitch. I'm going to work in the next one. One. And now I'm going to work those crosses again, just like we did for the first row of purple. It's just that we're going to have more of them now. This is a little tricky getting it through. Okay, that's number six. Now we're going to be working in these stitches. We're going to connect it. So we're going to skip this stitch just to continue on with the making the like double crochet X's. And then get this one that's kind of hiding under there. Okay, let's stop and pause. You see how this is coming out? And this is quite lovely when you can do this in contrasting colors. Now you may choose to just do them all one color I've done Afghans, baby Afghans like that. Um, I, I will say that I do like using purple. It's a very royal color, royal color for a king, um, for our king, and as a Christian, that is. And it really does make the cross stand out. I'm just going in through the top loop, but going in front of the other stitch is a little bit of a challenge. Let me see, how many do I need here? Okay, I think, I'm, I think I've finished. So now, what I should have done with this last stitch, I'm going to pull a little section out. I'm going to switch back to my white yarn and pull that through and continue working in white for the rest. And chain one. And here we go again. One. Two. We get to the stitch that's right before the purple. Put the white down and pick up the contrasting color purple 